Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this liquid glass effect. Now, I'm not really sure if whether that's liquid glass or not, but it's a fairly interesting look and I thought you might be interested to see how I went about doing it. So first of all, let's check out our project uh, settings. 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, and I'm choosing a duration of six seconds. So the first thing I want to do is import my sky background. So let's bring that in from the assets folder. Just going to adjust its properties, open up the rotation. And so we're looking up at the sky a little bit more. I'm going to go for a rotation, X rotation of 20 degrees. And then I'm set, going to set the scale to 70%. I just want to get a little bit more out of this sky. So I'm going to add a color levels. And we're going to go for something like this, I think. Just gives it a little bit more uh, saturation and um, contrast. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a clone of this sky group. So right click, make clone layer. So as you saw that made a new group and I've called that new group displace and I've called my old group sky. So then we need to create the elements that are going to create the displacement. So we'll make a new group above everything else. And one of the things I'm going to import is this thing called logo shape. Then I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm going to sort of draw a rectangle like that. And we'll come over to its geometry and just set that up a little bit more. The size is in material, so let's go for 2000. But the height, I want something like 225, well, specifically 225. And I want to set its color to black. And then I want to come over to the library and look for generators. We'll look for color solid. We'll bring that in and we'll put it at the back of the group. We'll set its color also to black. And then I'm going to grab my text tool and type some text. And I'm going to center it up. I'm going to center it up both ways. And let's just increase this size till it's fitting in our box here. Let's go for something like 240. And that means I can set the baseline to negative 80. And I just forgot to center up that rectangle. So let's center that up as well. And now my text is sitting in the middle of my box there. You obviously can put whatever text you want. So you don't have to use this logo. What I want to illustrate is that you can actually put anything into this group that we've just made here and it will drive the overall effect. So it doesn't have to be text. It doesn't have to be motion shapes. It can be an external image source if that's what you want to use. So I'm using a combination of all three here. The most important thing, though, is to put that black solid behind everything. So that all important group I have called Matt, and I can now turn it off. And what we're going to do here is we're going to mask the displacement layer using that. So add image mask and we'll use the mat. And because that's a black and white mat, we'll use luminance to cut it out. If I turn off my sky background, you can see we've got that isolated there. And now what we can do is apply some filters to this displace group. So I'm going to come to filters. First of all, I'm going to look for bump map. I'm also going to look for distortion and refraction. And then we can use that matte group as the source for both of those. So for the bump map and for the refraction. And hopefully you can already see how this is working. Now you can also see obviously that it's out of register and that's because we need to turn on the fixed resolution for our group there. And we should also do it to that matte group. So now you can see we've kind of got the beginnings of it. So let's just come back in and adjust these two filters that we've used. So for the bump, I'm going to have a direction of 90 degrees and an amount of 0.5. And I also want to set the mix value down to 75%. So we've got a little bit of transparency through to the background. And then with the refraction, I'm going to set that refraction all the way up to 175. And again, I'm just going to knock back that mix value. 
So next, we're going to make a clone of this displace group. So right click, make clone layer, and that puts the clone into a new group. And I've renamed that new group extrude. Uh, so to this group, we're going to add filters, as you can guess, stylize extrude. And we're also going to add another distortion refraction. We want to use the same mat for the refraction source, obviously. And let's just set up these values. First of all, I'm going to concentrate on the extrude. So angle of 320. I'm going to set the distance temporarily to 25, but we're going to come back and sort that out later. Now the back size I want to set to 0.97. And then I want back brightness of 0.7 rather than 0.3. And I also want to set the mix value to 75% again. So we get a little bit of see-through to the, to the actual sky in the background again. And let's set up the refraction. Let's go for a softness of 0.5 and a refraction of 200. And again, let's just knock it back 75%. So next I want to make a clone of this extrude layer. So right click, make clone layer. Uh, extrude group, I should have said. And what I want to do here is I want to create a little bit of a slash of brightness over this left-hand side. So I'm going to select the Bezier mask tool from down here, and I'm going to draw out a shape that's kind of like this. And now what I can do is I can set that clone layer's blend mode to be add, and you can see it does that kind of brightening up effect, and then I can adjust the mask. Let's feather it inwards just to soften that off. And so it's created that, that highlight effect. What I'm also going to do is to make a clone of that matte group layer. So right click, uh, make clone layer. And I want to add an image mask to that. So right click, add image mask. And I'm going to use the matte as the image mask and uh, switch to using luminance because I'm masking it by itself effectively to get a, a cutout like that. And what I want to do with this one is I want to create a drop shadow. So I'm going to set the blend mode of this group, or sorry, of this clone rather, I should say, to darken. So that makes it disappear like that. But then what I can do is come down and set up its drop shadow. You can see when I turn the drop shadow on, it's creating that a little bit more kind of definition. So let's just adjust that a little bit. Let's have 15 for the blur. Let's maybe just four for the distance. It just wants to be quite a subtle effect. And let's also go for 320 on the angle. So I'm really not overdoing that, but as you can see, it just helps to pull it out a little bit more. And I've renamed that group Drop Shadow. So there's another thing I'd like to do here. So it's not just sort of straight kind of CG look and that's to add a little bit of texture into this kind of glass or whatever we're considering it to be. So to do that, I'm going to come down into my base displace group there, and I'm going to import the element called dirty glass. And we will set its blend mode to add. And you can see it's given us these kind of speckles in the glass. Obviously we don't really want that kind of level of opacity. So let's go down to about 10 for that. and. Just, just that extra little bit of hint of something happening in the glass really helps it, I think. And I'm also going to add generators, uh, caustics, bring that in above the glass like that. Come to the inspector and set the speed to zero for that. And again, let's set the blend mode to add and then just knock that way back to about 20%. And again, that just gives us a little bit of kind of textural interest inside the glass. So I want a little bit of movement on both of these elements. And to do that, I'm going to come to the library and grab the cellular and bring it in there. Let's turn it off. We don't need to see it. And to the caustics, I'm going to add filters, distortion bump map, come to the inspector and use the cellular as the source for that. Bring the amount up to one. And then I'm going to copy that onto the dirty glass by holding down the Alt or Option key. I'll drag it onto the dirty glass. And now if we press play, 
you can see we've got a little bit of sort of just a little bit of movement in those elements and that's going to be just a little bit better I think. Always try to add some kind of organic textures into this kind of work even if you want it to look quite slick and uh, CG. Okay I think we're probably ready at this point to add a camera. So what I'm going to do is close down every group pretty much. In fact close down every single group. I'm going to make a new group at the top and I'm going to put everything apart from the sky into that new group and I'm going to turn it to 3D. So then we can safely add our camera, so object camera, and I'm going to set the angle of view to 90. Get a little bit more dramatic effect on this and come over to properties and let's set the X rotation to 12 degrees. So we get that effect of slightly looking up on it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add behaviors camera sweep. Now we don't want to go too far with this so I'm going to go from 5 to 15. And then what we need to do is because the extrude is not going to look right, the extrude needs to change in appearance as the camera rotates, is we're going to come into that group with the extrude in it and we're going to set the extrude distance to 0 and then we're going to right click add parameter behavior link. We're going to select the camera and the source parameter is going to be properties transform rotation y. And we're going to have a scale of 6 and a y offset of 10. So now as the camera rotates we see around the corner and that's not absolutely perfect but it's, it's, it's more than good enough to fool the eye. Next, let's come back to our camera and add behaviors, basic motion, throw. And let's switch to ramp to final value. And let's have a value of 50 for the X and negative 125 for the Z. So now we've got that sort of animation like that. So what we're also going to do is we're going to animate the background sky. So let's come down to the sky and add a behaviors basic motion throw onto that. Let's switch to ramp to final value. Let's have a, an X distance of negative 50 and a Y distance of 100. And then let's also copy that onto the clone inside this displace group here. So I'm going to hold down the auto option key and drag that onto that clone layer there. And I think I might just increase that X offset to something like 150. And now we're getting something that looks like that. A bit more of sense of the, the logo kind of turning around as we push in on it. So the final thing we need to look at is the liquid reveal. So what I'm going to do is come to my matte group here. Make sure it's set, set to fixed resolution. I'm going to come to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm also going to add color levels. Now I might need to make sure that Gaussian blur is set to crop so that it doesn't exceed the borders of the frame. And now if you look what happens here, actually I need to adjust this levels. Let's adjust the levels like this just to get a little bit of kind of crunch on it, something like that. Uh, on our, If you want to see the values there, they are that. I've got 0 0.64, 0 0.83, something like that. Um, so as, you, as we adjust the blur, and if I go all the way, you can see that it's now creating that sort of liquidy kind of uh, reveal effect. So let's now add some animation to this. Let's come to the first frame. Let's keyframe the amount. Let's set that value to be 300. Let's come forward to 16 frames. And let's set that value back down to 24. Then let's step forward six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keyframe that up to 64. Step forward 10 frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Set that back down to 24. Then let's right click here and show in keyframe editor. I'm going to 
draw around those last three keyframes and select ease both from the contextual menu. And you can see that smoothed out the, the transitions. So then again, with those selected, I'm going to press Command C for those keyframes and making sure I'm on my last keyframe, I'm going to press Command V. Then I'm going to select all of those, come to the last keyframe, press Command V, come to the last keyframe, again, press Command V. Then I'm going to select this tool here, which is the sort of a range selector tool. And I'm going to draw around all of those. And then holding down the Command key, I'm just going to drag down that top right hand corner there. And as you can see, that's progressively making those keyframes, uh, reducing the amplitude of that bounce as it were. So let's have a look at how that works. You can see it sort of bounces like jelly. You might have wanted to bounce like jelly, but I thought I would show you how to do that anyway. It's quite a useful trick to know with the, with the keyframe editor. So there's just a few things I'd like to talk about before we finish. So the first is that the beginning looks a bit messy here. And I think what we really need to do is something very simple, which is to come to this master group here and add a basic motion fade in, fade out, cancel out the fade out time and have a fade in time of four frames. And that just takes care of that initial section, which, which is a little bit messy looking. So we get a completely clean sky to begin with. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there is a little bit of overcomplication to the way that this got built. I was going to show you a more complex version of this project and then halfway through doing the tutorial, I decided not to. And we've got this clone here inside this extrude group and we just don't need that. We can simplify this and streamline it. So what I can do is I can delete that clone and I can put the displace group inside the extrude group and the effect is exactly the same. And, and we're streamlining the project and making it a little bit more efficient as well. Finally, I just want to point out that we can very easily change any of this and the whole project will follow along. So I could, for example, just type some different text in here and we could lose the logo. We can, we can do anything really we want. Um, we could take out the, have, just have the logo on its own. Anything you put into this group will automatically get updated. And the other thing we can do is we can actually just change out this background for anything we want. So as you probably saw in my opening example, so all we have to do is actually just change this sky background here. So if I were to replace media, so here I've swapped it out for this nice shot of the lake and you can see everything works. Turn that all back on again if we want. So there's lots of room here for, for customization. So anyway, thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope that was interesting. And as usual, a very big thank you to all my extremely generous patrons.